Have you ever wondered how the struggle for workers' rights began in colonial India? Well, let's embark on a journey back in time to unravel this story. In those days, the colonial rule imposed a harsh reality onto the Indian working class. Picture this, a world where workers were treated not as human beings, but as mere cogs in the machinery of colonial profit. For them, life was a daily grind of relentless toil, with wages so meager they barely met the basic needs. The working hours stretched on, often from dawn to dusk, with hardly any breaks in between. The concept of a weekend or a holiday was a far cry from the reality they faced. The factories were not any better. Imagine working in a place where safety was a luxury, not a right. The working conditions were hazardous and accidents were commonplace. But amidst all this hardship, a spark of resistance began to kindle. The workers, driven by their shared plight, started to voice their discontent. They began to question the status quo, challenging the oppressive conditions they were subjected to. They realized that their strength lay in their unity and so they started to come together to form the early workers' movements. These movements were not just about demanding better wages or shorter working hours. They were about reclaiming their dignity, their humanity. They were about standing up against an unjust system that exploited them for the sake of profits. The first signs of these movements were subtle, almost imperceptible. A whispered conversation here, a hastily arranged meeting there. But slowly and steadily, these whispers grew louder and the meetings became more frequent. The workers began to organize, to strategize, to mobilize. This was the spark that ignited the flame, setting the stage for a long and arduous struggle for workers' rights in colonial India. But remember, every revolution starts with a spark and this was just the beginning. In the coming scenes, we'll delve deeper into how this spark turned into a raging fire that transformed the landscape of workers' rights in India. As the 19th century progressed, how did the discontent among workers evolve? The answer is rooted in the rapidly changing landscape of colonial India. The Industrial Revolution was in full swing, and with it came a new wave of factories, mills and plantations. The working class found themselves at the mercy of this industrial machinery facing grueling hours, low wages and unsafe conditions. Understandably, this led to a surge in discontent among the workers. This unrest was not a sudden isolated incident. Rather, it was a gradual crescendo, fueled by years of exploitation and oppression. As the century wore on, the murmurs of dissatisfaction grew louder and began to coalesce into a unified voice of protest. Key events during this period served as catalysts for this growing unrest. One such event was the strike of the Bombay mill workers in 1882. Thousands of workers downed their tools and took to the streets, demanding better wages and working conditions. This strike, the first of its kind in India, sent shockwaves through the colonial establishment. Another pivotal moment was the protest of the Assam tea plantation workers in 1891. These workers, transported from all corners of India, were trapped in a system of bonded labor. Their protest against this inhumane practice was met with severe repression, but it also brought their plight to the forefront of public consciousness. These strikes and protests were not just about wages or working conditions. They were deeply intertwined with the broader political and social context of the time. The workers' struggle was a reflection of the wider fight against colonial rule and social injustice. It was a call for dignity, equality and freedom. These events marked a significant shift in the fight for workers' rights and laid the groundwork for larger, more organized movements. The seeds of unrest had been sown and they would soon grow into a powerful force for change. As the 19th century drew to a close, the stage was set for the birth of trade unions and the rise of the workers' movement in India. Moving into the 20th century, what marked the birth of trade unions in India? As the 20th century dawned, workers in India started banding together to form the first trade unions. This was a time when industrialization was rapidly changing the face of the Indian workforce, leading to myriad issues such as low wages, long working hours and abysmal working conditions that needed addressing. One of the earliest trade unions to emerge was the Madras Labour Union formed in 1920 under the leadership of B.P. Wadia a social activist and a champion of workers' rights. 
This marked the beginning of a more organized and structured form of resistance against oppressive work conditions. Soon after, in 1920, the All India Trade Union Congress, or AI Tuck, was established. This was a turning point in the history of the workers' movement in India. Its formation brought together workers from across industries, regions and backgrounds, making it the first national-level trade union. However, the formation and functioning of these unions were not without challenges. They faced stiff opposition from British employers and the colonial government. Strikes and protests were met with brutal force and heavy-handed tactics. Yet, the unions persevered, providing a platform for collective bargaining and a voice to the voiceless. Key figures played a pivotal role in the growth and development of these unions. Lala Lajpat Rai, one of the most prominent leaders of the Indian nationalist movement, served as the first president of the AETUI. His leadership and advocacy for workers' rights propelled the union and the workers' movement forward. These trade unions played a crucial role in the workers' movement. They were instrumental in negotiating better wages, shorter working hours and safer working conditions. They also played a key role in bringing the plight of the Indian worker to the forefront of the national consciousness. The establishment of trade unions was a major milestone in the workers' movement, marking a move towards more organized and structured resistance. They paved the way for the recognition of workers' rights and set the stage for the labor movements that would follow in the years to come. As we approach the end of the colonial period, how did the workers' movement reach its peak? In the twilight years of colonial India, the workers' movement was not just simmering, it was boiling over. A wave of resistance and solidarity swept across the nation, fueled by decades of exploitation and oppression. The late colonial period saw numerous strikes and protests, each one a beacon of defiance against the colonial powers. One such significant event was the All India Strike of the 1920s. This nationwide strike saw millions of Indian workers put down their tools and raise their voices, demanding better conditions and fairer treatment. The impact was profound and far-reaching, sending ripples of unrest and dissent throughout the colonial empire. During the same period, the Ahmedabad Textile Workers' Strike took the movement to new heights. Thousands of workers banded together, refusing to back down until their demands for fair wages and improved working conditions were met. This strike was a critical turning point, demonstrating the sheer might and determination of the workers. Trade unions, of course, were instrumental during this peak period. They served as the backbone of the movement, offering structure, guidance and a unified voice to the workers. Unions like the All India Trade Union Congress and the Indian National Trade Union Congress became powerful platforms for collective bargaining and negotiation. They were the catalyst that turned individual grievances into a collective outcry, a chorus that could not be ignored. But it wasn't just about organized protests and strikes. The peak of the movement was marked by an extraordinary spirit of camaraderie and unity among the workers. Stories of solidarity, of workers supporting each other in times of hardship, are the unsung heroes of this period. This sense of shared struggle and common purpose was the true power of the workers' movement. This was the peak of the workers' movement in colonial India, a testament to the power of collective action and resistance. Let this be a reminder of the capacity of ordinary people to effect extraordinary change when they come together for a common cause. Now, after the end of the colonial period, what is the legacy of the workers' movement in India? Let's delve into this fascinating chapter of history. The workers' movement in colonial India was a beacon of courage and resilience, a testament to the power of unity. Its impact wasn't confined to the colonial era alone. It has left a lasting legacy that continues to shape modern India, particularly in terms of labor laws and workers' rights. The labor laws we see today in India are arguably the fruits of the tireless struggles of the workers' movement. They fought for better working conditions, fair wages and the right to unionize and their efforts laid the groundwork for legislation that protects workers' rights. Today, laws like the Factories Act, Minimum Wages Act and Trade Unions Act are direct descendants of the causes championed by the workers' movement. But the legacy isn't just about laws. The workers' movement has greatly influenced societal attitudes towards labor rights. It brought the plight of workers to the forefront sparking a national conversation about labor rights that continues to this day.
The movement fostered a greater respect for the working class, highlighting their invaluable contribution to society and the economy. Perhaps the most enduring legacy of the workers' movement is the lessons it imparts. It serves as a powerful reminder of the strength of collective action, of the potential for change when people unite for a common cause. Even today, when workers face challenges, they can draw inspiration from the workers' movement, applying its lessons to their own struggles. The impact of the workers' movement extends beyond borders too. It has inspired labor movements in other parts of the world, serving as a blueprint for collective action and workers' rights advocacy. So the legacy of the workers' movement in India is far-reaching and profound. It's not just a chapter in a history book, but a living legacy that continues to influence and inspire. The workers' movement in colonial India left an indelible mark on the country, shaping laws, policies and attitudes towards workers' rights that continue to resonate today.